Hello and welcome, BomberFD here. Guys, I recently ventured back into killing Oryx on hard mode a few more times just because I wanted to try out a bunch of different strategies that I've been reading up on and also watching. Ultimately it came down to two different strategies that made the encounter a heck of a lot easier. First of all, for both these encounters, you designate a person for the first platform, for the second platform, and for the third platform. They will always be in that order, and they will always be counterclockwise to each other. For example, if Joe is going to be on the first platform, he's always going to jump up after the runner. Followed by the second platform, which will say Sally is always going to be counterclockwise to Joe. Followed by third, and I think you guys get the point. You're going to have one runner, obviously, and two ogre killers, which are going to be in the middle. These two ogre killers are going to have a touch of malice, as this is how the strategy works. The other requirement for this strategy is a titan, because the titan needs to drop a blessing of light in the center. Now for the strategy to work, you have to take advantage of the blessing of light. Your touch of malice should be doing double damage, and instead of eating away your health, it's going to be eating away the shield. And all you have to do is refresh that shield by dipping in and out of the bubble, and there you have it. The ogres die very quickly, and even on the last one, it's only the two people that are focusing on it. Now, for the knights, the people on the platforms don't have to worry about the ogres as much because the two ogre killers can easily handle it. So this frees up the people on the platform to easily kill the knights that spawn near them, as well as the taken, just so that they aren't bombarded by everything around them. Once the last ogre is dead, everyone's going to group up and kill the vessel of orcs. And for the last knight, that spawn can easily be killed by either the person on the platform closest to it or a floater can go out there and take care of it. For the blight slash bomb phase, everyone's going to run back to their designated platform that they were specifically on. While the floater, which is going to be me, I'm going to go to the relic platform because no one is there. I will pick up the slack there, while the other ogre killer will go ahead and kill the adds that are all around. And that's one method there. It does require a titan as well as two touch of malices. One mechanic I want to cover really quick, which I've noticed a lot of people have been having a hard time grasping. When you kill an ogre and a knight spawns in the opposite corner, that knight then runs to the ogre that just died, and it tries to take away that blight. This is really easy and good to know because every knight is going to have the same pathing. It's almost like the ogre that just died, that knight is bound to that ogre and where it died at. Hopefully that made sense because that's going to transition us into the next strategy that I'm going to cover. In this strategy, you are going to have the same thing on the whole platforms, the one, two, and three. You're going to have one person be a designated ogre killer, while the other person is the designated knight killer, and obviously the runner. Nothing new with any of the positions other than this knight killer. What you want to do as being the knight killer is you're going to want to get up on the daughter's platforms across from orcs. Initially, you're going to help out with ogres, because why not? You're up there, you might as well shoot it. Once that ogre is dead, you're going to look to where the knight is going to spawn. You're going to go ahead and take that knight out. Knights can easily be killed with either two headshots, or sometimes, depending on distance, it may take two headshots and a body shot. Also, depending on what sniper rifle you're using. Rockets are also super helpful since they kill the Taken that spawn right next to the knight as well. Now, for the people on the platform, all they have to do is just focus on the ogres. They don't have to worry about any of the Taken that are spawning. All they have to do is help the ogre killer kill the ogres. The other really nice thing about this is that as soon as the brand is down, everyone can get off their platforms and get out of danger, while the person that's killing the knights can easily stay out of danger on top of the platform and finish the last knight. The knight killer will also be on add duty, while the other five are trying to make orcs flinch, I can easily go ahead and dispose of all the adds that are up so that when it happens to be the grenade phase or the bomb phase, they can run to it without any danger being around. The ogre killer will also be the floater and go to the fourth bomb that's needed. Back to knowing how the knights work is it, it helps knowing the pathing because then it helps to know where to shoot them, especially when it's on that door side. You can't really see where the knights are, but you know that they're going to run across the middle to the opposite area where the ogre died. This has actually been my favorite strategy that I've seen and have done so far. Taking away the component of having to people to worry about the knights and having one person take care of it all really helped with them just focusing killing the ogres and also helped getting them into a safe place as soon as possible. I'm going to show another clip of being the knight killer but also a couple other things that definitely helped us. Having weapons of light for the ogre killer definitely helped as well as if you notice the hunter went ahead and did a tether right where the ogre is going to spawn. This sets up everything for success. It's going to mean that the ogre is going to completely melt as soon as it comes out. That way the person that's on ogre killer duty does not need to worry about falling behind at all. 
As the Night Killer, once you become more efficient, you can easily help out the Ogre Killer by just throwing down a grenade or even a couple shots on each one. As long as you don't forget that your priority is to kill the Knights first. I'm trying to get these guides out as quickly as possible because I know a lot of people are still struggling here. I don't think the struggle will be for that long because I do think once our light level gets up even close to that 320, this is going to be ridiculously easy. If you are struggling and you want to lead a group, I would highly recommend this strategy. I was blown away how far we got. We were a total random group, none of us raided together before, and we actually made it very far in the first few attempts that we even tried this. I really do hope that these guys are helpful to you guys, and if they are, please do thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do because it really does help me a lot. If anyone else has any advice or tips, please do comment down below, and guys, as always, before I go, do know that you are all loved.